All right, welcome back to our investigation of the steps of a muscle contraction. Uh, previously, we, went, we had an overview of the general stages of a muscle contraction and where we kind of identified the major steps, as you can see here, excitation, excitation, contraction, coupling, and even cross bridge cycling. So the idea here is we're going to break down a little bit and just focus on the excitation phase here. And so if you recall, uh, when we talk about excitation, what we're talking about is the stimulation of a muscle by a nerve. So a nerve will, re uh, will send a neurotransmitter. Uh, a neurotransmitter. We also might call this, uh, let me call it this. We also might call it the events at the neuromuscular junction, or NJM for short. So meaning that, uh, let's, let's kind of get into it, right? Uh, the idea that there is a, nerve that stimulates every muscle. It's called the motor unit. So a motor neuron, the motor neuron is the nerve that stimulates any given muscle. Uh, the motor neuron is, the nerve and the axon terminals attach right to the muscle. Uh, there's actually a small chemical synapse there. Uh, and so the neurotransmitter will pass that uh, and bind to receptors on the muscle. So you can see here, this is the idea that every muscle is actually stimulated by a neuron. And where the muscle meets the nerve is called the neuromuscular junction. And so we're really focusing in right here on this structure that you see here on the top of the screen and the middle of the screen. Maybe if I zoom in just a little bit more here, you can see that the, or remember that the cell membrane of, each, of this muscle cell is called the sarcolemma. So the location on the sarcolemma where the nerve meets at the neuromuscular junction is called the motor end plate. Let me focus, zoom in there. Yeah, it's called the motor end plate. So there's the motor end plate. Let me highlight it here, maybe in like a pink color for us. There's the motor end plate. This is actually the muscle. There's the motor end plate. Uh, and the nerve here contains... Here's the nerve. It contains the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. It will always be acetylcholine when we're talking about a muscle contraction. The neurotransmitter will always be acetylcholine. It's abbreviated right here, ACH, as well as right here, ACH. So acetylcholine will be the neurotransmitter that uh, ultimately will be released by the neuron. It'll bind to the receptors located on the motor end plate. So you can see here, uh, maybe I'll make it in blue. You can see here that there is the acetylcholine receptors. And so there's the synaptic cleft, the space that's just above it, the space here, um, which the neurotransmitter will drift off uh, into and then bind to the receptors located on the motor end plate of the sarcolemma. Now, just to review here, the receptors on the motor end plate are referred to as ligand-gated ionotropic channels, meaning that if you kind of focus here on the slide here, when a neurotransmitter like acetylcholine binds to this receptor, it causes the channel to open and then it becomes freely permeable to ions, meaning calcium and uh, sodium, oh, as well as potassium. Now, if you recall in the concept of an action potential, membrane potential, there's a high concentration of sodium outside of the cell. Right. There's a high concentration of sodium outside of the cell. There's a high concentration of potassium inside of the cell. And it's the amount of sodium that rushes in that ultimately causes this action potential to occur. 
So again, the neurotransmitter is acetylcholine stored in the axon terminal. It's released when a nerve impulse reaches the aptic, uh, releases the axon terminal, diffuses across, and then binds to re receptors. So that action potential will travel across the entire cell membrane like an electrical current. So let's just take a look at this in a word form here, and then we'll watch the video. So in the phase one, excitation or the occurrences at the events that occur at the neuromuscular junction, well, an action potential has to travel to a neuron. The neuron is the motor neuron in this case. That neuron will release acetylcholine into the neuromuscular junction. Acetylcholine crosses the synapse, binds to receptors on the motor end plate of the sarcolemma, and then binds to ionotropic channels. Those chan I mean, those receptors are ionotropic channels that change the membrane permeability, and an action potential is ultimately generated. Let's take a look at that. So here's our concept related to the motor neuron, to the skeletal muscle fiber. The area where these two meet is known as the neuromuscular junction. It contains the axon terminals of the motor neuron, as well as the motor end plate of the sarcolemma. We focus in on a single synaptic terminal where we'll see the motor end plate. The first step is that a action potential will reach the axon terminal of the motor neuron. The next step here that you don't have to be as familiar with is that calcium is going to be is going to be influx. Calcium is going to come into the cell uh, because of these voltage because voltage gated receptors have been stimulated because of this action potential. Uh, we're not too worried about the neuron just yet, but what we do want to focus on is this acetylcholine, the neurotransmitter. Let me. There it is, acetylcholine, the neurotransmitter responsible for all muscle contractions. It's released into the synaptic space. It will then allow it will then bind to ligand gated ionotropic channels or acetylcholine receptors, which are ligand gated ionotropic channels, right? They're cation channels, as you saw in that video. The next thing is that you're going to have a influx, a significant influx of sodium into the cell. So sodium is going to, I'll draw the picture here for us. Sodium is going to rush, that's in this red, you can see here, there. It's going to in. Potassium is going to exit, but it's the influx of sodium uh, that significantly different and allows for the action potential to be generated. And so if enough of a change occurs, an action potential will be generated, right? If enough sodium influx in, you have an action potential that will travel across the sarcolemma 
and we'll talk about what happens after that when we talk when we get into the excitation contraction coupling. So again, just to close up here, as we and we get into the first stages of that excitation contraction coupling, the electrical current generated or upset in the change across the muscle cell membrane is called an action potential when more sodium classes in. Once generated, this action potential will travel across the entire sarcolemma. So that is the first step of a muscle contraction referred to as excitation or even events at the neuromuscular junction. Stay tuned as we continue to talk about excitation contraction coupling and cross bridge cycles.